Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we're going to talk about MSI video cards and what's good about them. And we've got Alex from MSI. Alex, what's your job? I am Technical Marketing Manager and PR at MSI USA. So for this episode, I've decided not to prepare Alex with any of the things we're going to talk about other than just these are the graphics cards we have. So. <laughs> Uh, Alex, you have, I'm going to time you, you have 30 seconds to say why the customer should choose an MSI video card instead of somebody else. Very, three things, very simple. Thermal solution, we have the best thermal solutions, twin foser, transthermal, a bunch of other stuff. Best uh, components, military class components, we improve the power phase on the cards and all that stuff. And software, we have our afterburner software. I mean, anybody uses video cards, afterburner software, no brainer. Bam, done. Wow, that was actually surprisingly good. Okay, this is a reference GTX 670, so you can tell it has a fairly small PCB, and uh, you can tell it has a fairly mundane looking cooler. Um, I want you to compare this to the GTX 670 Power Edition, which I actually don't know where it is on it's the right table. There. Is that it? Okay, yeah, okay. So, so, so here, I'll, I'll get that for you. Uh, there we go. Um, explain. A couple of better things about this card versus a reference design. First of all, it's a, more of a full-length PCB. Now, right. I, I want to emphasize the full-length PCB doesn't necessarily mean that the PCB is more complicated or, um, in terms of uh, a bunch of extra stuff, but a couple of key advantages. First of all, you can have a full-size cooler and not have it, uh, you know, uh, if you look at the reference card, the, the it's a full-size cooler, yes, but there's like this the weird, weird, weird overhang, if you will, on, on the end of it. Um, the yeah. second thing is uh, power pl plugs could be placed on the edge of the PCB like how it normally is. For so this, uh, uh, if you have a short PCB, you have to stretch the cables across uh, from the side of the case. Whereas, right. uh, whereas on the R's, you know, you don't have to stretch the cables as much. Right. It's, it's hidden out of sight. We also have a not very apparent if you were to if you can't see it, but there is a full size heat sink that covers the length of the card. We'll do a that, close up. That covers the uh, memory modules um, and it also helps to stiffen the, the PCB so when you mount the card it doesn't flex at, at, you know, right. um, as much. So component wise, I mean, if they can build a GTX 670 on a PCB that's like two thirds the size, why do you guys need a bigger PCB to build it? Because we have more power phases on this, we want to make sure that the in terms of the the power delivery, it's 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 better. Just because as it, it, because if a PCB is more compact, there often is not enough room for all of the better power traces, if you will, on the on the on the board as far as power delivery and the components. Okay, so here's a tough one though, because GTX 670, at least in MSI Afterburner, from what I've seen, doesn't support overvolting anyway. So why does it even matter if you have a beefier power design? Actually, the Afterburner does support it now. 2.2.3 and newer does support voltage control on the voltage adjustment. I, I should say on the uh, on the on the Kepler GPU. Can I do it on this card? No, because it uses a uh, reference power power controller. It's it's on the PCB, but the key differences with our Power Edition 670s are. Lightning 680s, that's that one over there. The video cards actually use our own um, proprietary, well not proprietary, our own power control chip on the PCB. And we have software control via Afterburner, Afterburner. that supports voltage control on that chip. Now normally Afterburner supports other manufacturers' video cards, whether it's reference or, or whoever else. But in this case, with a 670 or 680, Afterburner will have no way of increasing the voltage no. unless they've implemented it exactly the same way as you guys. Yes, yes. And in, in other words, they have to basically copy us to to, to offer the same benefits that we currently offer. And if you overvolt to 670 or 680, can you achieve higher boost clocks than without over voltage overvolting? Theoretically, yes. So, but some of the overclocking stuff, it uh, it will vary based on right. what so he the doesn't individual want to chip. Say it. And what the individual chip is capable of, because you know some of that stuff. I mean, it's like. Okay, you, but you know, your mileage may vary. Can you at least say probably? Probably, most likely. <laughs> most likely. I cannot say definitely. <laughs> definitely is the word I cannot use. Probably, most likely, um, chances are good. How about definitively? Uh, a cloud, uh, sorry, so sunny forecast. Can you say 99.9%? Uh, I, can, I can say uh, there is a 99.9% .9 of a 99.9%. .9 
<laughs> now your phone's ringing. Oh wait, oh, yeah, my phone's ringing. It, says, <laughs> it actually says time's up, but that was three hours ago. All right, so we're all familiar with the Twin Frozer cooler. We've been seeing that for a few generations now, starting with, I think, what, four 400 series NVIDIA cards? Twin Frozer, this is actually the fourth generation, but we've actually had Twin Frozer since 280, GTX 280 days. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, you GTX what I know 280 then. days. Okay, so uh, Twin Frozer is typically on Hawk Edition cards or on Lightning Edition cards or Twin Frozer Edition cards. That's mm. where you find it. Yeah, uh, yes and no. Uh, the Hawk and the Lightning will have the newest version of the Twin Frozer. Okay. Just a quick introduction or back, background information, if right. you will. The key thing about Twin Frozer is that it's got a tw uh, twin, twin, whoa, twin fan cooling mm -hmm. solution. Um, right. Like but the biggest thing is that for each generation we introduce something different. Okay. The first generation was very plain. The second generation, we introduced uh, uh, the you know the the heat heat the heat fins uh, with like a couple of super pipes. You know the large oh heat right pipes the on larger the, heat on, pipes on the, on the bottom. Okay. Twin Frozer three, we introduced the uh, propeller blade that you see here. Right to keep dust out of the fan. Uh, uh, no, no, actually, no, no, no. What? Uh, it's what it is is that compared to a traditional fan, this moves about twenty percent more air at, oh. at at the same RPM. And the blades, the coated blade, the, the this this uh, coated coating, if you will, on the side yep. helps reduce uh, fa the turbulence, if you will, at the end of the fan. It's kind of like the winglets on the end of a wing oh. on an aircraft. You know, it helps okay. reduce turbulence, uh, helps reduce drag, and which makes more more noise. And Twin Frozer Four, which is what uh, what you see here, introduces with the dust removal technology, where when you first start the the computer, this uh, fan spins in full reverse for about twenty or thirty seconds. And then it spins in full, re full forward mode for about 10 seconds, and then it loads the, the regular speed. It's not going to clean your computer for you, but at least it helps to reduce the amount of dust buildup that a video card would normally have. Oh, OK. Um, well, that ended up being more of a thing about Twin Frozer. But what I really wanted to question you about was the fact that we have a Hawk card here. This is a 7870 Hawk no. that has a very unique and Different? Oh, is it not a seventy? No, it's not a seventy seventy. What, what is this thing? 77, 70, 70, 70, 77, 70 power edition. Power edition. Oh. Yes. Okay. Well, then we didn't find a twin frozer on it. Well, okay. Well, whatever. Um, <laughs> here, talk about it. Okay. Uh, uh, we, we we the main thing was with uh, mainstream cards. We wanted to make sure that uh, there's a newer. Wanted to continu continuously innovate, right? But okay. then two fans versus one fan. There was an endless amount of debates. You know. Right. So, because one fan is quieter. And two fans is cooler. Yes, yes, but right. you, know, you know, there's always a trade-off, right? So we wanted to offer a uh, something that was more unique. So with this, this is a what we call a transthermal uh, cooler. Transthermal. And it's transthermal, like transform okay. thermal. Oh man. Transform okay. thermal. <laughs> and the, really, the key thing is this: you can there's there's three configurations that you can run this cooler in. Okay. First is what you see in front of you: really single cooler. There's a, a large. Uh, you got like aluminum fins. Yeah, aluminum oh. fins. Uh, okay. uh, 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 you know, on the cooler. But then you can also have a secondary configuration. You, there's two tabs on the top and bottom. And all you have to do is you just fold and slide, and it locks the, the cooler. And now okay. you have space for a second fan. And the fan just basically goes like this. And this is how long it takes, you know? We're not doing this and then off you, camera. And then you plug it in, and that's it. And oh, you guys you have, have a, you have a fan header yeah, there's on a, the... Yeah, there's a fan header on here that allows you to have the, oh, right, okay. the powers this fan. So. so then the same fan control profile that applies to fan one will also go to fan No, fan Jesse, two. only on fan one, because this is what this one will run at a constant speed, because this is a, uh, oh, a, a, a okay. two, two plug. Uh, we, don't we didn't want to make it overly complicated. I mean, we could well, have... this is a mainstream product. Yeah, we, 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 we could right. have made this with, with like a three-pin header and stuff like that, but then right. it just be, there's adds a, a whole nother level of complication because then you have to add a second circuitry in terms of how you control the fan, you know, on, on oh, the I board see. side. So okay. it's a little bit more complicated than just adding a, a, a controllable fan. But, you know, this is this this allows the card to have two, two, uh, two fans on there and it still retains a two-slot configuration. Now, right. if you're only running this in like a small case and you only have uh, you only want to run one card, but you want to maximize your cooling, uh, this we have what's called a double airflow mode, where you basically put this back into the original location. Yeah. Then and you can actually add this fan on top. Are they counter rotating? They actually ro they actually rotate together. So oh. it, it, it so it. Um, so it, it, you can have essentially uh, uh, more airflow going in. Huh. You know. Okay. And, so and that makes it a triple slot. Yeah. This, so, so now it becomes a triple slot. But the, again, if you're only running one card and you wanted to maximize your cooling for whatever, you know, this, this, this is there. But uh, the the biggest thing, the biggest 
the main emphasis, if you will, on this thermal solution is that we're giving users the flexibility of being able to customize their cooling solution without being stuck with either a, 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 a two two fans on the you know single right. single card or even like a three slot solution or whatever. And if you were to compare the price of this versus a a even a completely reference seventy seven seventy the the you know this is an overclock card. And with the custom thermos and right. all, the, all of the uh, the additional power circuitry, it's only about ten dollars more than the, the actual reference card. So it's not right. it, we're not asking. This is not like a fifty dollar extra card. There's nothing fancy about this. It's just it's a you know very in, you know innovative uh, thermal solution and, and for a very minimal, if not if virtually zero price difference. Cool. So we're back and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to talk about GPU boost, or not GPU boost, so you took... Boost, uh, yeah. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to hand you a video card that has this feature, and I'm just gonna, I'll let you take it away. All right. I was making the... Uh, I was trying to do the whole um, the um, robot thing in Majig on purpose because there's, there we have this thing called GPU reactor. Now, for copyright reasons, I'm not going to mention what uh, you know GPU reactor is supposed to be. Uh, you, you could get the correlation between a uh, mechanical, you know, robot-looking thingamajig and a reactor, but okay. But that's where he was going with that. See, I didn't stand a chance. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the main thing is this. Take a step back and look at overclocking, right? We wanted to make sure that people have uh, uh, experiences, you know, good experiences with the overclocking. We want to make sure that uh, we don't make things too complicated. We want, we don't want to bind them to a certain restriction, if you will. And I will explain why that card doesn't have a, a backplate in, in a bit. Sure. But, but the reason why we created the GPU reactor was basically this: for air cooling, this doesn't do a single thing for you. You can take it off if you oh. want to do air cooling. But if okay. you are doing, if you wanted to put this under LN2 benching, or if you're trying to set a benchmark, personal benchmark record for whatever, it's kind of like this. Uh, every little step at the high end, top end counts, right? Okay. And we wanted to basically put together something that allows you to maximize your overclocking OC potential. So how, t how can you do that? You basically add more power, more, more capacitors, and you basically make the power delivery circuit, if you will, to the GPU better. So it's just a physical limitation. Yes, There's yes. only so much space on the back of a GPU. Yes, exactly. But you guys are cheating. Well, yeah, we're cheating, basically. So, <laughs> so what, what we did was uh, we added this thing called the GPU reactor. There's a cover covering it, and there's a small GPU PCB reactor. that uh, is on the back of the card. And this PCB actually is removable. It's, mm -hmm. That's it. It's, that's, okay. that's all it is in terms of removing it. And then it just and looks like a normal card. It just looks like back. a normal card in terms of like the various right. capacitors and, 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 and uh, resistors, if you will, on the back. And if you were doing air cooling, if you're running like a you know, Crossfire SLI setup, you know, this right here is a two-slot card. So you actually can run seven, you know, two, three, four cards back to back, and there's no way for anything of anything to touch it. I'm not touching the fan right now, you know. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. And so, so there's no no contact points besides the actual shroud. But if you put the GPU reactor on it, then it becomes a, a a three slot three card. Slot. Yes. So one above, two below. Oh uh, no! Just yeah, yeah, exactly. It becomes a three slot card. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, but but if you think about uh, you think of all, all the cards on the market with like three slots, right? You're stuck using those three slots. You, you cannot change it. You cannot slim it down to two slots. You cannot, you're, right. you're, you're stuck using that system, you know? Whereas this one allows you the flexibility. If you wanted to run an SLI setup for gaming, um, you can have two cards. You can have the best of both worlds. Or three cards. If, if you will. Right. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you can have the best, the key is you can have the best of both worlds when it comes to GPU setups. Right. And the, uh, the, the, the board itself, there's nothing fancy about it, but this really, improves the uh, current capacity to the GPU, as well as filters the power going there. Imagine oh. like a high-end home audio system. Right. There's uh, power conditioners, what they call power conditioners. If you actually look at what's coming out of your wall, 120 volts, it's actually like this, up and down, up and down, yeah, right? Yeah. This board helps to filter that power so that you can get the extra 10, 20, or 30 megahertz, if you will, on the overclock on the right. GPU. And you know that it, it makes a difference between, think about it this way, if you're setting a benchmark, Nobody's gonna remember who came in second, right? They always remember us. This is a right. world record holder for blah blah blah, right? right? But you don't remember who came in second. Who, right. won, who won the uh, Monaco Grand Prix last year? Who won the French, you know, the French, the the the, the Canadian Grand Prix uh, F1, whatever, right? This year, right? They always remember the winners. Nobody remembers who came in second. Right. So this so that's is the idea. Th that's the idea, so that you can get the every single. So even if you get two more megahertz. That will be the whole point. Yes, that's the whole point of this. Okay. And then if you don't need the, this extra stuff for regular, you know, fragging and uh, quake 
or some really absurdly old game, then you take it off. Warcraft and, and, 2. And Warcraft 2, yeah, there yeah. you go. No, no, original Doom. Okay, original Doom gaming <laughs> on your... So, so yeah, if you don't need it for that, then you take it off and, and you have a two-slot card and you don't have to worry about, you know, space issues and you can run an SLI, whatever. So why does the 670 Power Edition not have it? Because it's a Power Edition. What, what, I, what I was talking what I showed was this. This is the 7870 Hawk. Okay, so only the, Hawk cards. And Lightning. So, and the, the and card lightning. over there is the 70, six, GTX 680 Lightning. Oh, also has a has GPU one. reactor. GPU reactor. A little right bit there. more fancier. The back plate is more intricate. You know, the GPU reactor is larger. Uh, but this oh, is a power edition. Okay. It doesn't have that. We have our 7950 power edition, and it, it didn't have the back plate as well. Uh, but right. we will have our um, in GeForce GTX blank Hawk. <laughs> you know that one will have blank. You know the, the GPU reactor. Hey, I have to say blank because yeah, I don't know if it, if it will come out. You know if <laughs> if and when it comes out, who knows, right? But I can't say it. <laughs> so. Okay, well, I think that pretty much covers it. So, in summary, you know, it comes down to the component choices, the flexibility, and, uh, you know, the, I guess, yeah, it's just a choice. Which, yes. which card you want, how does it match your needs, and I think this has been great. Thank you, Alex, for joining us on this Why Choose MSI Graphics Cards episode, and don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips.